Hello everyone, welcome to this video which is part of a series that aims to take electronic circuit concepts and demonstrates them in a practical manner to, to make what seems as an abstract idea or an abstract theme in the field of electronics and electrical engineering and make it more tangible and easy to understand. This video will be taking a look at one of the most basic yet most fundamental concepts in analyzing circuits, and they are nodes and branches, loops and meshes. But first, before diving into these concepts, let's clarify the tools that we will be using today. In the workbench, we have two main equipments that we will be using, a multimeter and a breadboard. A multimeter is an instrument designed to measure electric current, voltage, and usually resistance. It can be used as an ohm meter that measures resistance, an am meter that measures current, and a volt meter that measures voltage. Volt meters can measure voltage when connected in parallel, and an am meter is a device that measures current when connected in series. Don't worry if you don't understand parallel and or series connections. We will discuss them in our next video in the series. In this video, as we will be discussing nodes, branches, and loops, we will be using the multimeter to help us see nodes through a test known as the continuity test. Breadboards are boards that are usually used for prototyping circuits with electronics and testing circuit designs. And it will be the tool that we will be using usually to connect components in a circuit. As seen from the image, we can divide the breadboard into multiple columns. Two outer columns, specifically for VCC and ground, and two inner columns for connecting electronic components. The two outer columns are bounded by two lines, one that is blue and the other that is red. Kindly note that breadboards come in different types of color, color notations and usually the column closer to the red is used to represent VCC and the column closer to the blue, which sometimes can be black, represents the ground. The whole column for ground can be considered as a node. Similarly, for VCC, the whole column can be considered as a node. However, this is not how the rest of the breadboard is divided. As for the inner part of the breadboard, each column is divided into multiple rows of nodes, and each node has five junctions, which are these five dots that we can see. First. Let's take a look at loops and meshes. A loop is a closed path inside a circuit where you can start in one point and go all the way through something without crossing yourself and come back to the same point. On the other hand, a mesh is a special type of loop that does not house any other loops inside it. So let me identify some iterations of different loops that we can find in the circuit. This is one loop that engulfs, engulfs two meshes. This is another loop that engulfs one mesh. Similarly, this is another loop that engulfs two separate small loops that we have uh, mentioned as meshes. Similarly, this is another loop that is a mesh. When we identify the meshes, we have three meshes. One, two, and three. Now, what is a node and how does it differ from a branch? To understand that, we must understand what branches in a circuit are. Branches are basically any two terminal device or any component that can be a resistor, a diode, or a capacitor, or even an inductor, whereas a node is an un interrupted segment of wire of any shape. And usually this wire is considered to be perfect and has no resistance, therefore all the points on the node have the same voltage. Don't worry if you don't understand this concept right away. We will first switch over to a demo 
where we will be highlighting and looking at different nodes and branches in a circuit, and then switching over to the bench to further explain and even see a way where we can visualize nodes through a continuity test. When looking at the circuit, we can see that there are a number of components. And as we've mentioned, branches are basically any electrical components. And we can see that we have a resistor over here and another one over here, as well as a voltage source, another resistor, another capacitor, and another resistor. So a total of one, two, three, four, five, six branches in this circuit. During my early stages of being a student and learning about nodes, I found it a bit difficult to visualize them without highlighting the different nodes in the circuit with different colors. And what I mean by highlighting is by starting at a certain terminal of an electrical device. For instance, here in our first node, we are starting at one of the terminals of the power supply and then highlighting all the paths until we reach a dead end and this dead end is another terminal of another electrical component. So we can see for the first node we have one simple node that is connecting one of the terminals of the power supply to the other of one of, to another a terminal of another electrical component which is the resistor. As for the second node we will start to highlight from the other terminal of this resistor and then highlighting all the paths that we have until we reach two dead ends which is a terminal one of the terminals of the capacitor and one of the terminals of the resistor similarly for the third node we are starting at the second terminal of the power supply and highlighting all the paths until we reach two dead ends each being one of the edges or terminals of the resistance or the resistors. And finally, what may seem as the most complex node to identify, the fourth node, we will start at one of the resistors and then highlight all the paths until we reach three dead ends. And these dead ends represent the terminals of three electrical components, two resistors, and one capacitor. But before we switch over to the bench, what are continuity tests? Continuity tests in electronics is a method used to check if there's a current flow in an electrical circuit, indicating that a circuit is complete. However, it's very important to note that before applying this continuity test to a circuit board, power must be disconnected. Continuity tests are useful in many applications, especially in troubleshooting. And we will be using continuity tests to check for nodes in a circuit because nodes in an electrical circuit, as we've, uh, look, uh, as we've mentioned in, in this video, are any points where two or more components are connected. So through using a digital multimeter in a continuity test mode, we can check if there's a complete path for current flow between these components. However, it's also important to note that due to the presence of low-valued resistors, motors, transformers, inductors, speakers, and diodes in an electrical circuit, continuity tests can sometimes give ambiguous information regarding how circuit components are connected. Nevertheless, it's very important to use continuity tests when troubleshooting circuits and even in understanding circuit connections. So without further ado, let's jump over to the workbench and uh, look at how we can use a multimeter to perform continuity tests and perform a continuity test on a breadboard with the information that we've acquired in this video regarding the different nodes in the breadboard. To operate the multimeter as a, uh, or in the continuity test mode, we would need to first of all connect the two leads that we have or the two wires that we have. We have one that is red and one that is black in my case. You would, we, you would usually have one that's red and one that's black. And we will always connect the black wire to the COM port. 
the red wire is always connected based on the reading or the thing that you're trying to measure. So if you're trying to measure the current, then you would you would need to plug this wire in the either the milliamps or the amperes part of the multimeter or terminal. And if you'd like to measure the voltage or the resistance as well as the continuity test, then you would need to plug it in just as I've plugged it in in this terminal. We also need to turn the dial into the correct mode of operation of the multimeter. And in my case, I've dialed it towards the continuity test mode. And when I turn on my multimeter, a 1 will indicate that there's an open circuit. And in our case, since we haven't touched the two leads together, we do have an open circuit. And when we touch the two leads together, we have a closed circuit. We've created a connection through touching the two leads, the black and the red wires or leads. We end up hearing a buzzer sound as well as Look at uh, when looking at the multimeter, we can see that the one turns into what is closer and close, what's getting closer and closer to zeros. And a good connection is a connection that has zero displayed, zero res resistance displayed on the screen of the multimeter. So this is our breadboard, as we've uh, discussed in the video. This is a whole node. And this is usually connected to the positive power supply. And then this, the second column, is indicative of ground. And the same thing duplicates over here. So this is a whole node, and it's usually used for uh, VCC and this is the ground node which is a whole column over here. Now in these two columns as we've mentioned each individual row of five junctions A, B, C, D, E and here F, J, F, G, H, I, G, J are a node. So let's test for nodes using just a bread breadboard. What we will do is first of all take our multimeter take our multimeter with the red wire connected to this side of the multimeter and the black to the com power it on make sure that we are having the dial to the continuity test setting of the multimeter Take our two leads. What should happen is in the areas where we know that it's a node. This is a node. So what do we expect? We expect to hear something. What if we jump down to the second row? We do not expect anything. And we can see that there's a number one indicating that this is an open circuit. If we come back over here, to the first node, we see that there's a zero resistance over here, meaning that this is a whole connection. When we apply a voltage over here, it will be shared across the whole node. So this is one node. Similarly, if I keep one of my terminals over here and check here, it's an open circuit. This is a, this is a node and this is a separate node. Now, we can keep on playing with the multimeter and the breadboard and try to identify with the continuity test the different nodes that we've talked about uh, in this video in the breadboard itself. But I would like to take this further and look at a real circuit, an example of a, a real-life circuit of powering on a an LED, a very simple circuit, and try to identify the nodes first in the circuit diagram, and then try to identify the nodes after wiring the circuit according to the circuit diagram with the help of our multimeter. So without further ado, let's jump right back into our workbench 
and look at how we can do that. Now let's translate the circuit diagram that includes an LED, a resistor and a power supply to the breadboard. How can we do that? To do that, we need to identify the nodes to make it easier to implement the circuit onto our breadboard. So when we look at the circuit diagram, one node starts at one, at one of the ends of the resistor and ends at one of the other ends of the LED. Another node starts at the negative terminal of the power supply to the other ends of the LED. And the third node starts at the positive terminal of the power supply to the other ends of the resistor. So we have a total of one, two, three nodes. Now that we've identified the different nodes in the circuit, we can jump over to the breadboard and reflect this circuit diagram into the breadboard itself. First, I will unplug the power supply so that we can have a close-up of the circuit and look at how we can implement it. First things first, we can see that we've connected the ends of the power supply or the battery uh, connectors to, the, to the, the nodes for VCC and ground. Now, starting at the positive terminal of the power supply, we must connect the positive end of the power supply to one end of the resistor. And this is exactly what we did. First, we connected a small jumper wire from, from the VCC node to one of the nodes, and then connected the node, this node, with its neighboring node through another jumper wire. And in that node, we connected the resistor. Now let's look at the second node. In the second node, we are connecting the other ends of the resistor to the LED, more specifically the positive terminal of the LED. As for the last node of the circuit, we connected the negative terminal of the LED with the negative terminal of the power supply by a jumper wire that is in the color black, just to denote for that negative terminal of the power supply. Now let's use a multimeter to test or to visualize these different nodes that we've dissected in the circuit diagram and implemented into our breadboard. So let's start by testing the first node or testing for continuity in the first node. And to do so, we will be placing the black and red leads or wires onto the first node. We should hear a buzzer sound while testing in that node. Similarly, let's test for the second node of the circuit. We should hear a buzzer sound. And finally, our last node, we should also hear a buzzer sound indicating that this is a node. Thank you for watching the first video on this YouTube series and I hope you found this helpful in identifying loops, meshes, nodes and branches. Stay tuned for more.